many of you will be aware, but for those that are new to LEA, um, Dan Jones founded the Lean Enterprise Academy back in 2003. Uh, Dan's the author of many lean books, and he set up LEA as a not-for-profit organization. Our aim is to help people become self-reliant on their lean journey. We've got products and services that we offer to customers based around three key value streams, learn, teach and coach and share. At the intersection of each of those processes is our lean learning journey platform where we're writing down in a usable form the key knowledge required to learn and implement lean. The materials are organized around the lean transformation framework, which we both research with um, with partner companies and um, and we develop uh, new materials around that as well. The materials and processes that we develop are based on the on a fundamental f uh, principle. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach him how to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. We've done a lot of research to understand how to learn lean most effectively. We know from practical application that skill or capability development is best described as a journey a guided learning path progressing from awareness and knowledge of a subject through understanding, being capable, and finally being able to teach and coach others. We've always offered on-site support to help people on this progression, but 18 months ago, we started to develop a plan to offer this online. During the pandemic, we've accelerated the activity. We've developed a new website, an online platform in which to develop modules, and the process for conducting support remotely. As the lockdown eases, we'll combine the online learning material um, and the remote coaching at short intervals with on-site delivery in the workplace. To put today into context, the materials are all about knowledge, skill level one. However, you can develop understanding by learning yourself online using our standardized work knowledge course. To become capable, however, you need to practice, and that's best done with real issues at the workplace. We do offer teaching and coaching for this, and we offer a process to help you once capable to be able to train the teachers in your organization. This approach mirrors what we know from the way excellent lean companies like Toyota develop capability. It's simple and effective. It uses a plan, do, check, act methodology at each stage. With the introduction out of the way, let's move on to today's content. David's going to explain the teach poster concept before providing an introduction to standardised work in terms of purpose, process and people. We'll then take questions. Peter will lead an exercise on standardised work and then hand back to me. I'll share some insights around using standardised work in the COVID-19 vaccination process. We'll have a discussion and Q&A session at the end. And let me now hand over to David to get us started. OK, thanks, David. Cheers, so, David. Uh, let's talk a little about why we use the uh, the teach poster concept. So for a sustainable lean transformation, we're strong believers in the concept of leaders as teachers. So that is leaders who take the time in, to teach and coach their team on the job to develop capabilities rather than relying on separate functions um, to do it for them. The benefits of doing this are huge in terms of advancing your lean journey better, faster and cheaper. But the challenge, however, is uh, how to provide materials that enable leaders to do that. So after a number of years of research and experimentation, we found that the teach poster concept seems to work best. So rather than a 100 page PowerPoint slide deck, we've tried to distill the subject matters down onto one piece of paper, I suppose a bit like an A3. We found that this is much less uh, daunting for leaders uh, to use and also much more informal than sitting down in a um, classroom looking at a screen. All the posters are uh, that we're developing using a similar layout and structure, making them easier to follow and remember. And as you can see, we try and use images and pictures uh, rather than words to stimulate interest and discussion. For each of the posters, we uh, write a facilitation guide, um, which covers the important steps, the key points and reasons for each of the images to assist the leader when they start to teach out. Uh, and finally, the poster can be put in your workspace um, for future reference rather than being on a PC hidden away somewhere. OK, so we're going to go through the upper portion of the standardised work poster and we always start with the lean transformation framework and then cover purpose, process and people. So purpose, position, the subject and why is it important? 
process the conditions and considerations required to apply it, and people, the roles and responsibilities required to make it happen. So the lean transformation framework, in essence, is our approach or how we do lean. And we always ask where does the topic fit into that framework? As you can see, it consists of five dimensions which um, all need to be considered for a sex, uh, successful transformation. And these dimensions can be asked as a series of questions and starts with the uh, number one at the top. What is our value driven purpose? Uh, more specifically, what problem are we trying to solve? And we've shared our thoughts on problem solving in our prior webinars. With regards to standardised work, however, that really helps us answer question two. How do we uh, do and improve the actual work? And also question three, how do we develop the capabilities that we need? Standardised work helps define the best, um, how best to complete the work and also provides a foundation for future improvements. So by establishing, establishing a standard, it will make clear those who will need capability development uh, and support to achieve this best level of performance. A full explanation and video narrated by John Shook of the framework can be found on our website. But before moving on to purpose, however, um, it's probably worth spending a few moments clarifying the difference between standardised work and work standards, as you may already have those in your business. So work standards define the work required to achieve the design intent of the product or service. So the content is quite specific with regards to the technicalities of the work or process to achieve a successful outcome. And as you can see, here, for example, temperature or duration or torque or quantity or frequency, for example. Standardised work defines the best method to perform the work with the least amount of waste at the time it was written. And it does this by defining the required time, work sequence, a minimum amount of stock uh, required in order to enable that to happen. So typically changes to work standards require changes to the design or specification of the product or service um, and vice versa. And, and this is usually managed by some formal change process for traceability and conformability purposes. Standardised work, however, does not impact the design or specification of the product or service and therefore improvements or Kaizen can be implemented quickly by those conducting the work to enable it to be done better, faster and cheaper. OK, so we've um, kind of cleared that up. So let's talk about the purpose of standardised work. Well, as we explained, it helps us define uh, the work to be done. And in the famous quote by Taichi Ono, uh, without standards, there can be no improvement. Uh, without standardization, standardization um, will have what we call chaotic or variable process performance. And by defining the standard, we're able to stabilize that performance and provide a foundation from which to improve on further. And it's therefore seen as the first step of improvement. And essentially it enables us to ensure that the work is done safely, correctly and efficiently, and make sure that we have the best work method and quality with the least amount of waste and at the lowest cost. If we start to think about um, process, we can consider using standardised work at all levels of flow. So from individual work um, to that performed in a cell or area, to work connecting those cells or areas at the work stream level, and to the extended flow between organisations. If you think about it, work in some form will be done at every level. And the more we can standardise it, then the better our performance will be. Now, broadly speaking, there are kind of four types of standardised work. So type one is that which is conducted on a repetitive basis or at a regular frequent interval. So the work content is well defined and consistent in its nature from cycle to cycle. And this is common in kind of mass production environments where cycle times are relatively short and usually measured in seconds. Type two is what we call variable. So this is where the time interval and the work content can vary from cycle to cycle. Um, I suppose the classic analogy here would be producing four door, five door and estate type vehicles on the same assembly line. So the trick here is to balance the overall workload over a longer time frame to meet the customer demand. And the Japanese word um, uh, that's used to do that is called heijunka, or in other words, what we call leveling. 
Type three is what we call long. So this is, um, as the name implies, where the time interval and the work content is longer. So typical examples here are in logistics, for example, where you may be delivering or collecting products around the um, organization. So cycle times here are typically measured in, in minutes or maybe even slightly longer. And then type four is really for the kind of business type processes um, or office uh, where the time interval and the work content depend upon the process and the activity. So doesn't really specifically fit into the other categories. Now, uh, the reason why we have these different types is because we do have slightly different documents and methods for implementing it and managing them. Now, if we continue with process in order to implement standardised work successfully, there are a number of preconditions that we must achieve. So the first is to ensure that we have a stable process. So by that, um, we mean that the work is repeatable the equipment used is reliable and the output from the process is capable or provides good quality. So to achieve this, we must um, seek to eliminate what we call abnormalities in the work or unexpected events and also look to minimise fluctuation. If we don't, then the work content will vary um, and disrupt the team member and frustrate them um, as they're not able to achieve any kind of natural flow or rhythm. So this is where your problem solving skills will be required to achieve a, a, you know, a level of process stability that you can rely on. Having achieved an acceptable level of stability, uh, we can next work on determining the three key elements which make up standardised work. So they are tack time, work sequence and standard in process stock or SIPs. So tack time is the rate at which we must complete the work to achieve the customer demand. Um, it's a pure calculation by dividing the working time available by the customer demand uh, for that same time period. Work sequence are the major steps or tasks required to complete the work and SIPs, um, the minimum amount of stock required to fulfill the tack time and the work sequence with the minimal amount of waiting time. Or in other words, the minimum amount of stock to keep the process running. If you don't have these three key elements, then essentially you don't have standardised work. OK, and finally, moving on to the, the people element um, and their roles and responsibilities in creating and implementing standardised work. So by defining the work to be done, it become clear the skill levels of the members involved in the activity. So this provides an opportunity to determine their gaps in their capabilities and make a training plan to close them. And in turn, this will create a more flexible multi-skilled team as the members are developed. As we know, creating the standard is the first step of improvement. Ongoing Kaizen will enable the team members to make the work easier and achieve better results with less effort. And by sustaining the standard with more PDCA Kaizen cycles, improve further. The benefit of all this is obviously it supports employee involvement uh, and teamwork and helps to create that kind of culture of continuous improvement. Now the last piece is the role of leadership in standardised work um, and primarily it falls into two main activities. Those around maintaining the current standard of performance and those around improving it. So maintaining the current standard is about having a management system to highlight when the process is having problems uh, meeting the expected level of performance. Having highlighted the problems, the leader's role is to help the team solve those day-to-day -day issues with the work and get back to standard, um, dealing with the abnormalities and seeking to minimise those fluctuations. Improving the standard is about the leader facilitating the time for the team to make improvements to the work and achieve even greater levels of performance by making the work easier. And it's important to know that it's not the leader's responsibility to make the improvements for the team, but to support the team to do it. And to do these activities, the leader must adopt uh, kind of behaviour of go and see uh, and use management routines or leader standard work uh, to recognise, teach, coach and feedback to the team on a regular basis. Over the years I've found uh, a lot of organisations trying to make improvements, as we mentioned before, but they're caught up in that daily firefighting here. And they didn't really understand the importance of standardising the baseline work activities at the right level of detail first. So then you can solve uh, the problems quickly and get back to standard. But I originally worked in automotive manufacturing where we used this kind of a fun exercise to introduce standardised work to team members 
so they could understand the importance of it. It uh, quickly demonstrates to once that you have the baseline standard in place, it's easy to start implementing improvements, set the standard again and go back to the same cycle of continuous improvement. So I'm going to start the exercise now. I'm going to start it with an interesting pig fact that you all really wanted to know. So did you know there is 678 million pigs in the world? <laughs> so I have a large order for pig pictures that I want to send out in my weekly magazine to impress my pig farming customers uh, about having the best happy pigs. Oink, oink. So your role in this is to supply me with the best happy pig pictures at the right time. So hopefully that should be pretty easy. Hopefully you have followed the instructions on your last webinar invite email and printed out the standardised work exercise sheets. I don't know if you can see these because of my background, but uh, we've got the sheets. So hopefully you printed them out. If you haven't printed them out, then maybe you can just use a pad with a grid on. Yeah. So please have them ready and a pen and pencil as well. Also, this is your chance to win a free copy of the workbook uh, on creating continuous flow, which has a lot of details about uh, it's our sort of baseline uh, standard for understanding uh, uh, flow and standardised work. But it's only going to be for the best quality drawn pig in the right time in the safest way. So let's see how you get on. OK, so for round one, you're going to uh, use the uh, blank grid, sh uh, grid sheet marked uh, round one from your standardised work exercise pack. And you're going to have 40 seconds to draw your pig picture by following the work to be done list shown on the left hand side here uh, of the screen. So you're going to start drawing your pig picture when I start the timer and you must finish when you hear the sound at the end of the 40 seconds. So hopefully everybody's ready. You've got your sheet, got your pen and pencil and we're going to set off. Right, I need some brave souls to turn on your webcams and show your pig pictures and hopefully we can compare them to each other. Yeah. So Dave's got his up there. Is that a pig or a sheep? I'm not it's quite sure about pig. that, yeah? Pig nose. Pig, yeah. Anybody else brave enough to show their pig picture? No? Yeah, I'll show you mine. I don't mind. There you go. Thanks, John. Oh, all right. Bloody hell, that is a happy pig, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where maybe I come a... from. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit there's, of a cat pig, mine. maybe. But it looks like my cat. Yeah. <laughs> it's just eating a okay. cat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. That's great. Anybody else? I've got one. You want to show it? Can you see it? Not yet. <laughs> Can anybody else see that or not? It's just me. <laughs> no, it's showing it on my camera. Ah, now I can see it. All oh, right, OK. Wow, that looks like a tiger pig. Yeah, that's yeah. very good. Yeah, That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Claire. That's great. OK. Well, you can see here if you uh, there seems a lot of variation in the pictures. <laughs> And really, some of them look more like cat pigs. And uh, there's a picture here. Yeah, I think this is one that Dave Brunt drew earlier, and it more it looks more like a giraffe pig. Yeah. <laughs> so it, you know, I'm not really very happy as a customer. We've got a lot of variation in our pig pictures. Yeah, and I want the best ones on my magazine. Yeah. So does this remind you about any processes in day to day sort of life that have not been standardised? Yeah, where you end up frustrated with poor quality service or high costs or long lead time. 
I think two of my favourite kind of uh, non-standardised processes are returning parcels online or recycling waste. They all seem to be very different and very confusing. Yeah. So as a customer, yeah, we need to try and fix this problem. And um, we're going to have another attempt now at it, yeah. But this time you're going to follow some work that's been standardised. So hopefully I can get some nice pig pictures for my magazine that roughly look the same. OK, so in order for the pig pictures to be drawn safely, correctly and effectively, Chris Bacon, the artist supervisor, and his team went through the process of standardising the work for you. They first checked the tap time, as mentioned before, to achieve for one pig drawing based on the customer demand, which has been calculated at 40 seconds, as you previously, previously just done. Then they determined the major steps and the sequence needed to draw the pig correctly, which we'll run through on the next slide in more detail. And lastly, they determined what standard materials and tools were needed to carry out the job successfully. So a black pen or a pencil and a blank grid sheet, which hopefully you've got. This information then was transferred onto a job instruction sheet as shown. So Chris Bacon could use it to train other team members to draw a pig to the standardised work. OK. So I'm going to instruct you now uh, on the important steps and the sequence that will go through uh, necessary to draw a happy pig. So step one is draw a letter N at the top left intersection point of the grid. And note the bottom centre of the M should touch the intersection point. Step two, draw a letter W at the bottom left intersection. And note the top centre of the W should touch the intersection on the grid as well. Step three, draw a letter W at the bottom right intersection. And note the top centre of the W should touch the intersection as well. Step four, draw an arc from the letter M to the top right intersection. Step five, draw another arc from the top right intersection to the bottom right W. Step six, draw an arc between the two bottom Ws. Step seven, draw the letter O in the centre left box. Step eight, draw an arc from the letter M to the tangent of the circle. Step nine, draw an arc from the left W to the tangent of the circle. Step ten, draw an arc from the I halfway between the M and the circle. And step 11, draw an arc from the mouth, halfway between the W and the circle. It must be a happy pig. And step 12, draw the curly letter E near the top of the arc on the right. And finally, step 13, draw two dots in the middle of the circle for the pig's nose. A lovely, happy pig. So now we've gone through the instructions, it's time for you to draw the happy pig again. This time, use the round two uh, blank grid sheet to draw your pig on, which also has the instructions. So remember, you've got 40 seconds. So when I click uh, the timer, start to draw your pig again and stop when you hear the countdown. OK, so off we go. Minus 40 seconds. Oh, OK. So, uh, John, do you want to show your pig picture again to the camera? Show it this time. Mr. Marriott, do you want to come off camera? That's it, thanks. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that looks pretty like the standard, that one. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Excellent, yeah. Doesn't look like a cat pig now. Yeah, no, um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> and then was it Claire? Do you want to show you? Have you got your brave enough to show your picture again? Oh, good. Is she there? Yeah, she's there. You can see it. 
Yeah. All right. Sorry, I can't see it. Yeah, I don't know why my camera's thing's not working. Yeah. Dave, can you see it? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's Is pretty it pretty good? good? Oh, well done, Claire. Okay. I'm grateful, grateful it's not a unicorn. I'm not very good at them. <laughs> oh, there, I can see it now. Okay. Thanks, Claire. Well, pretty good. Pretty good. So, did you draw it to the tack time? Did yes. you draw it within the tack time? Yes. Okay, I, good. I felt okay. that my M's and my W's themselves are wonky, though, but that's just my handwriting. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty good now. One of the biggest differences is that I'm more happy as a customer now. At least they all look like pigs and not cats and things. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now we've set the baseline standard. We can hopefully, you know, safely produce a reasonable quality pig picture, which meets my customer requirements and on time. But uh, as Claire mentioned there, do you think there's room for improvement? Was your pig picture not quite the same as the standard? Yeah. How could we improve the standardised work for drawing the pig in terms of safety, quality and efficiency? So just take 30 seconds and write down your ideas and how you think you could improve drawing the pig. Okay. OK, so once we've uh, standardised the uh, baseline work, it makes it easy to do the next step of uh, improving the work through Kaizen, as uh, mentioned previously. And we do this through eliminating any unnecessary jobs or steps and details, combining steps to reduce the work or rearranging steps uh, for better work sequence. Also, we can simplify any work motion, layouts or tools and handling to make it easier. So did anybody think of the ways it could improve the standardised work for drawing the pig? I don't know, John and Claire. You Do can have a pig know? stencil to draw through. Ah, OK, very creative. Yeah, I, I was thinking of measurements or tools like rulers, protractors, that sort of thing. OK, so a bit more on the precision side. OK. So did you think about the motion ways? So could you resequence the steps so the pen or the pencil never leaves the paper? Yeah. Mm. Uh, what about quality improvements? So you could add more definition to the size of the nose or the ear, or you might also want to add uh, grid lines to improve more grid lines to improve the quality or efficiency. Yeah. Uh, you know, you guys came up with some good ideas, and I'm sure there's many more out there as well. Yeah. So simple, small changes can make a big difference and improve the standard again. Yeah. So. OK, we're going to go on now. And so Chris Bacon and his team has gone through a series of uh, small improvement changes to standardise uh, uh, to the standardised work for drawing the pig. And by removing waste through eliminating, combining, rearranging and simplifying the work to be done. Uh, we're going to come up with a final attempt now uh, following these simplified instructions and methods shown on the left hand side to connect the dots. So use the round three blank grid sheet to draw the pig. Not this one. OK, and you've still got 40 seconds to draw the pig, so let me know when you finish. So get your sheet ready and off we go. T-minus 40 seconds. Oh, great. OK, so, uh, so. So John and Claire have been brave. Yeah. So did you manage to draw the pig? What were your comments on this round? I didn't actually finish the pig off because I was ah. focusing more on the numbers and reading the instructions. <laughs> OK, so Good I'll point. show you mine. I don't mind. There you go. Uh, That's okay. as far as I got. Oh, you weren't too far off then. Yeah, I did finish it, but. I was concentrating on the lines. Oh, mm -hmm. can you see? I don't know. Yeah. Um, 
because it's not showing me my picture, so I can't see if you can see the pig. <laughs> but yeah, I got lost because then I didn't read all the instructions properly. I was concentrating on the time, and then I was like, "How does the one connect to the nose?" And then I was like, "I just draw a line because I know that's what it's supposed to look like." <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, so at least you're pig... concentrating concentrate on the quality of it now, yeah? So yeah, but good. other than the fact that my pig's eye now looks angry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you know, we can make small changes, but when we make change, we need to instruct people again, don't we? Yeah. Uh, and make sure they understand the changes. Yeah. So, uh, but with small changes to the work, we can continually improve that. And you could go on to make many, many small changes, improve it, and hopefully meet the tack time again as well. Yeah. Uh, reduce, you know, improve the quality and uh, maybe the, the cost of it uh, and the lead time as well. Yeah. So in reflection, the standardised work ensures the work to be done is correctly defined and can be repeatably uh, performed in a sort of uh, safe and respectful way with people, uh, correctly, efficiently and with the best uh, quality method, with the least amount of waste and at the lowest cost. Yeah. So Kaizen then can be used to further improve the work to help achieve the business goals and challenges. And standard work must be simple and co-created by the team members and team leaders so it's meaningful and real time at the workplace. So I think you all did a great job. Oink, oink. So we'll put your name in a, a prize draw for the book and we'll notify you if you win. So I hope you enjoyed this exercise and uh, you can use the material that uh, come along with this and in the course to uh, you know, uh, do this exercise, hopefully a bit more practically than online with your own team. OK, so I think it's over to Dave again. Yeah, yeah thanks, Pete. I just needed to unmute myself. It's another <laughs> five pence into the kitty or the piggy bank, whichever way you look at it. Um, OK, so um, typically standardised work is known in automotive assembly plants, but um, you can use it everywhere. Numerous examples exist. McDonald's uses standardized processes. So do airline pilots who have checklists and logs before, during at the, and at the end of the flight. Uh, we've recently, though, had a new use for standardized work, uh, which is administering the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, been very interesting to, uh, to see um, what different areas, different places have, do, have, have done on that. And um, not only in the UK, around the world, and we've had backwards and forwards discussions with uh, folks from Toyota who've been helping other people and so on. Um, in January, I was fortunate enough to uh, spend some time in my local GP practice, and I wrote the case up to try to share some lessons learned from applying lean to lots of different environments. Um, I'm sure that we'll have to administer vaccines and boosters in the foreseeable future, and unless we do it safely, correctly, efficiently, and conscientiously, we risk really overburdening the frontline workers that we've relied so heavily on. Um, type one standardized work is highly applicable here. The cycle time short and the work is repetitive in nature. The um, coronavirus pandemic has led to the largest vaccine program in history and vaccines have taken place in dedicated hubs, in hospitals, in GP surgeries, pharmacies and care homes and residents. So I wondered whether standardised work w uh, could help deliver a consistent experience with enhanced safety with qu good quality on time and at low cost. As Dave mentioned, there are three elements to standardised work. These are tack time, the work sequence and the standard in process stock. So if we look at each one of those in turn, remember the visuals as we will use these as a prompt to show where we are in the discussion. Tack's a German word and it means beat. It's calculated by dividing the available work time by the customer demand. Tack time is therefore the beat or pace at which we need to produce to meet that demand. In the vaccine example, if a GP's got 9,600 patients, um, at the time when I wrote the case up, they needed to vaccine, uh, vaccinate over 80 year olds between the 19th of January and the 14th of February. Um, now, unfortunately, the GPs weren't receiving a limitless supply of vaccine. They only received vaccine on six days. 
working seven and a half hours per day for the six days, you'd calculate that the tack time is three minutes per patient, 2,700 minutes divided by 900 patients over 80 years old. So that's the tack time. Um, there are a number of ways that we can visualize the process when creating standardized work. The exact sequence of the method depends upon the environment. For example, in an environment using machines, we'd start by creating a process capacity sheet to calculate the capacity of each machine and to identify and eliminate bottlenecks. In our example here, we've got manual processes. And while the capacity is relevant, uh, is relevant the process capacity sheet isn't as useful. Um, the standardized work chart shown here enables the layout to be displayed. We do this to be able to show the movement of the team members in relation to the work that they're doing, in this case in relation to the patient, the equipment and the information that they're dealing with. The next thing to look at then is the work sequence. And the standardized work chart um, shows the overall door-to-door -door flow from walking into the surgery to walking out. The work for one patient involves entering the building, the reception, activity in the clinic room, receiving the vaccination and waiting or leaving post-vaccination. We'll explain the sheet in more detail on a subsequent slide. Grasping the situation involves developing a process study sheet. This is the process study sheet for the door-to-door -door flow. We have the work elements, the what, at quite a high level, and have timed 10 successive patients progressing through the process. Where, when, and who carries out these activities is also documented. We've noted issues and opportunities as we observe. A door-to-door -door level analysis is relevant in such a short lead time process as this. Note that the lowest repeatable time for the door-to-door -door activity is less than five minutes at four minutes and 49 seconds. Let's now focus our attention on the vaccination in the clinic room. So this is the, this is the detail to conduct the value creating work of administering the vaccine. On the process study sheet, each work element is described. The process has been studied 10 consecutive times as well in order to establish a lowest repeatable time for each work element. By adding up the lowest repeatable time for each work element, the lowest repeatable time for administering a vaccine in the clinic room is two minutes and 45 seconds. And we use the lowest repeatable time rather than an average here. Averages are dangerous when we calculate this time. Um, as we all know, my head been, can be in the oven and my backside can be in the fridge and on average, my body temperature can be normal. A good way to visualize the ability to meet the tack time is to construct a bar chart. This chart has various names. It's sometimes called an operator balance chart, sometimes a cycle time, tack time bar chart, and sometimes a Yamazumi chart. The chart shows that the clinician can meet the tack time of three minutes. Their work takes less than the three minutes tack time. It also shows that the work between the clinician and the administrator is unbalanced. At this stage, we're looking at the following. Can we meet the tack time? That's the difference between the work content and the tack time bar, the, the red line on the, on the chart. Both the clinicians and administrators work are well beneath the tack time, so they can meet the tact. Secondly, what is the total work content to give one vaccine? In this case, it's 225 seconds. What's the total number of team members required for one vaccine? Well, in this case, we have 225 divided by 180, the three minutes, and that equals 1.25 team members. A frequent mistake is to balance the work before conducting this analysis. We don't want to balance work and cycle much faster than the tack time. That'll hide waste. We can see the waiting time more clearly on the next slide. The standard, the standardized work combination table shows the combination of manual work time, walk time, and machine processing time for a team member in the sequence the work is done. Here I'm showing the standardized work combination table for the clinician and the administrator. This highlights the amount of waiting that the administrator uh, has after they've completed their work. They can't do their, their next step as the clinician must do some more work before they can then do their next activity. The table again helps us ask questions about how we're doing the work and how we can improve the work. 
The last document in the vaccination example is the standardised work chart. This shows the movement of the team members and the material location in relation to any machines and equipment and the overall process layout. We also identify where quality checks and safety precautions are necessary. The third element of standardised work, the standard in process stock, is shown in this chart. Put simply, the standardised uh, the standard in process stock are the materials we need to keep pro the process running. I've inserted a photo that shows all the items needed by the clinician to administer the AstraZeneca vaccine. There aren't many items. It's not a complicated process from a mechanical point of view. It might be complicated in terms of the what could actually happen to the patient. Um, but defining SIPs, the standard in process stock, helps us identify opportunities for improvement. On reflection, Ono's quote, without standards there can be no Kaizen, is profound. Think of standards and standardised work as a framework for making improvements. Without a standard and standardised work, there is no gap to close. No opportunity for Kaizen to make the work easier and little chance to practice PDCA. In short, having no standards reduces the chance of employee involvement and reduces the potential for learning and development. The irony is that so many people think that working in an environment in which standardised work is the norm will be boring or that this is time consuming to create. This misses the point that the team members must be responsible for the standardised work and that standards should evolve. They should change as conditions change. Standardised work is key to enriching work and doing it more effectively and efficiently. I'm sure we'll have to administer vaccines and boosters in the foreseeable future, and unless we do it safely, correctly, efficiently, conscientiously, we risk overburdening, overburdening the frontline workers. Adopting standardised work gives all managers and frontline workers a route out of the vicious circle of overburden. So with the, the case study completed, I'll hand back to Peter. OK, thanks, Dave. So usually we'd say, uh, what's the elephant in the room? But I think today we need to say, what's the pig in the room? And that isn't my front living room. <laughs> I suspect many of you are thinking this is all good. But the real issue for me is how do I learn this well as an individual or cascade it successfully into your organisation? So where do you start? Well, external training can be confusing, expensive or very often done as a quick one off training activity. Uh, to achieve a certificate or a belt instead of a supported and progressive skill development journey. So real learning is uh, of a skill is achieved through on the job practice with support, just like learning to drive. So to build a true lean culture in an organisation, it can only be done when the line leadership become the teachers and coaches. So the thinking way and behaviours become embedded at every level of the organisation. Our research uh, applying standardised work has helped us develop a lean learning journey that individuals or organisations uh, can easily follow and learn it well. So our recommended lean learning journey for standardised work is to gain some initial basic knowledge around purpose, process and people and get familiar with the subject. Most of that you've covered today, but we also have a free online uh, skill level one course that Dave mentioned earlier uh, for you to use. Uh, yourself or your whole organisation. The next step on your lean learning journey should then be able to gain a deeper understanding of the key steps, types of standardised work that were mentioned, doc documentation and the methods of sustainment. You should then try out and practice it on an own case study or a simulation exercise. And this way you can reflect on the implementation examples and learn from your mistakes. The skill level three is aimed at making you capable through step by step implementation on your in your workplace. You should be coached by an experienced skill level four leader and implement it directly on a real workplace uh, problem or process. If you do have a role as a leader, then we recommend that you go on to complete skill level four to do standard work, standardized work well and be able to teach and coach others. Here we recommend you gain some more experience through completing multiple implementations while developing basic coaching skills. You should then aim to successfully develop at least one team to become capable to level three standardised work through a real situation application. Depending on your circumstances though, or if you don't have access to in an internal coach, 
then we can offer you an online or face-to-face -face level coaching. Just contact us directly or mention it afterwards at the end of the webinar. So here's a good example of our customers we supported to develop skill levels one to four through online coaching of standardised work. Our uh, partner in this case is Toyotoshi, a Toy, uh, Toyota car dealership group based in Canada. They had some problems to solve for their car servicing side of the business. After an initial COVID shutdown, they had to change the way they work to meet COVID requirements uh, with customers and also with less staff, unfortunately. During the year, they had two peaks in customer demand for tyre changes. They struggled to cope with the work and end up uh, extending the customer lead times during this period. They already had work standards in place for their car servicing work, but they weren't standardised to ensure a predictable work, uh, flow of work, which resulted in a lot of waste and customer delays. They also had a strategic goal to provide the shortest lead time experience to their customers, what they called key to key time. So our approach with them was to work directly with the leaders so they could become self-reliant and be able to coach and teach their own people sustainably. We proposed a development approach based on a short burst PDCA learning sessions over a few months. So our PDCA approach was planned over each week in short burst sessions so leaders and team members could fit it in with their normal work patterns. The week starts with a short online one hour teach session which were, which where we break down the learning into bite-sized chunks. Just enough to progress step by step the process of developing standardised work for one pilot area. We then set the leaders implementation homework to try out the bite-sized learning chunk on their own team in their own area. Over the next couple of days, the leaders would then trial and implement the changes needed with their team on the pilot area and capture what they did on video. The next session to check with the leaders uh, went on, uh, is what they have done and what they learned. In the coaching sessions, the leaders received direct feedback on the improvement points and also review what the next steps are going to be. The leaders then adjust their approach based on the feedback and update their improvement plans to reflect the progress. We found that a short burst weekly cadence of learning and then doing straight after is key to ensure continuity and progress of implementation. By following this process and standardising some of the critical operating processes, they achieved their best ever tyre change season without extending customer lead times, while also meeting the strict COVID requirements in probably what was the worst business environment for many years. OK, so we've known for a long time that the real benefits of lean occur when organisations and individuals become self-reliant. However, few organisations have become self-reliant with a process uh, to do that and keep doing that or continually learning. So please ask yourself, how do you develop your capability? Do you have a process for it? Leaders need to develop people to get the work done and improve the performance at the same time. The argument for leaders as teachers is extremely strong, but it's not the way that many have gone about implementing lean thinking. So today we've provided you with an overview of our teach poster method. We've explored standardising work in terms of purpose, process and people. You then hopefully had some fun with the pig picture exercise to demonstrate the importance of standardised work as a foundation for improvement. And finally, Dave Brunt shared with you a real life case study on the application of standardised work to show the relevance and need to ensure the work can be done safely, correctly and efficiently. I hope you've enjoyed uh, our learning webinar today and uh, you start using standardised work as a foundation for improvement. So I'm just going to hand over to Dave for the last Q&A session. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest lean content.